Welcome, generals, to Ray Reverse Gaming. And um, in this uh, video, I'm going to be doing a review, my final review of the game. And I'm going to um, give you as much, many tips and insights into how you play this game so that when, so that if you have it but didn't like it because it was too complicated or whatever, if you are, n have never played this game, um, you'll consider it, such as I noticed that the history guy has not played this game. He's got a big audience. Why aren't you playing this game? The reason is because it has such a huge um, learning curve. I put 500 hours into this game and I'm going to make, I'm making this video so that you don't have to do that and still have a really fun experience. At the beginning, when I got this game, I looked around the net looking for AARs. I was only able to find one AAR in which a guy, um, I for, I'm sorry, I forget his name, um, um, he's really devoted to the game. He 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 got a, a minor victory, and I think this is one of the big problems for this game, which I think is an outstanding game and fun to play. But um, if you don't understand how it works under the hood, then it is so frustrating that you're just gonna just drop it like a rock. Okay, so. Um, Let's. Uh, it, it, this may be a long video. I'm sorry, but I think it'll be worth it if you if you're interested in the game. Um, it will help you tremendously in playing the game, and um, so it may be a long video. I apologize for that, but I think it's worth it. So f first of all, I'm going to go to um, one of my saves, so that we can uh, we can start uh, getting into all the information. Okay, so I, I loaded up uh, the 4th Octo of October of July from my last game. And um, so just to give you an idea of how extensive this review is going to be, we're going to cover supply, we're going to uh, cover combat, we're going to uh, cover postures, um, uh, we're going to uh, talk about um, uh, relationships, decisions, and... Um, I have something else written down here, but I don't know what it, what it, what it says. Okay, but anyway, off we go. Now, the very first thing that you need to do right off the bat, okay, is to go into your preferences and go to the map and turn on this HQ power range. This thing you really, really need to know the HQ power range for for your movement. You don't have this turned on. Um, it's like it's like you're you're playing blind. So I have it turned on, and what does this do? Is it means when you p click on an HQ, it tells you whether or not they're in supply range, which is five hexes from the headquarters. Okay. Okay. You get this big circle, and you have the green, and then, you know, a turquoise, and then out here, you've got two that are uh, a brownish color. As long as uh, your units are inside that range, okay, they will be supplied, okay? And that's very important because if they are outside of that range, then they won't be supplied, and you'll find out that this guy here, who's got 140, if he's not in that supply range, okay, he's not going to move, he, or he's going to have like 20 or 30. So you, you, a, a lot of your movement is going to depend on the this range that they have, and you want to make sure that that headquarters is especially um, is covering all of the troops of that army. And notice how all the army units light up. Um, for a lot of units. Um, you also want them, you want this headquarters to be very close to the combat, okay? I th I, in, in, the, in the AARs that I've read, I, I watched, I saw that the, you got some sort of a bonus from being right there by the battle, but I don't know about that for sure, 
But one thing is for sure, and that is when you get reinforcements, they always occur, they will always come where your headquarters is, where your headquarters is, okay? Now, 18th Army is going to get uh, reinforcements. 16th Army is going to get reinforcements. We're in the 4th of July. This is the very beginning of Panzer. 9th Army is going to get reinforcements. 4th Army is going to get reinforcements. All these guys are going to get reinforcements. Okay, so you do not want, you do not want um, for, the, for your um, slow divisions, uh, slow armies as they call them, um, you do not want them to be way back here, okay? You want them to be right up there at the front. And there's a place in here, okay? Yeah, brief, where if you're interested, there's reinforcements. And it gives you the schedule of reinforcements. Okay, so I'm at the 4th of July, and there's going to be a chance that this, um, this um, unit for 4th Panzer is going to come come out. You can just go through and, and see for each date what happens. Some of them withdraw. Okay. Okay. It's, 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 I didn't really bother with it. Okay. I know that they're coming. I know these guys are going to get um, um, reinforcements. I know that when I take Minsk solidly, then I'm going to get a uh, uh, second army is going to come in. All right, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is when, when we talk about supply, remember that it doesn't matter for your slow armies, your infantry armies, where the headquarters is. But for, the, but for the, um, your fast um, divisions, for your, panzer, for your panzer armies, okay, it's absolutely necessary that those guys are either on your main road, main uh, supply rail network, or on a road. You do not want these guys off over here. You do not want them not on uh, some sort of infrastructure. That is a great way to destroy trucks, and it's no, there's absolutely no reason for you to do that. Okay, trucks. Um, are a continuous problem in the um, in this uh, in this game, and that's why you have this guy over here who's the truck commander. Okay, and the more trucks that you lose, the more this guy is going to be a pain in the ass, and um, and it's going to hurt you. Okay, it's going to hurt you in the end. So you need to conserve your trucks, and the and and um, do not go off-road. Keep them as much as possible on these railroads. Okay? I mean, that's just basic army control. Okay? Here's 3rd Panzer. Notice he's he's um, he's he's uh, all of his units are within supply range. Now we come down to 2nd Panzer. Now here I am and I'm going to be thinking about doing a, a, a surround, you know? I'm going to try to, try to um, create a pocket here around Minsk. And when I look at Second Panzer and I look at his supply range, what I see is he can supply out to here, okay? So I always try to keep my Panzer group, my Panzer group's leaders, as close to the supply as I can. In this case, we're drawing from a, a um, main supply because we haven't put any forward supply bases um, forward. And you know you need to put supply bases forward when you have more than 10 trucks, okay, that need to get to him, all right? We have these trucks that are going here and these trucks are going here. so. I think you know the the best is to this is this is the opening phases. Um, we're we're getting a lot of bonuses. The Soviet army just can't handle what's going on, so we need to make these big encirclements. But as quickly as possible, we need to get Third Panzer down onto this um, uh, main uh, um, 
railroad line. But what it tells you by by okay, we start off the move and we and we click on this guy. Okay, and he's going to tell me whether I can do this or not. And to do this, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move him. Okay, this is covered. One, two, at least three, probably four. So I'm going to have to move him. One, two, three, four. Just right off the bat, just move him. One, two, three, four. Okay, and now, now when I move my panzers, okay, and here's another another clue that's really important is always use always start especially with your panzers start from the back okay the guys who are furthest away so he's let's see here let's let's look at fourth panzer we click on him he's got a guy down here it's cavalry he's got a guy over here he's 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 an he's a um a, a tank so a tank division so so let's go ahead and, and so we move him and we bring him up here. Okay. And now we're going to take this guy and we're going to move him up here. Okay. In attacking with your tanks, usually you're going to need at least three, three motorized or tank um, divisions to break through a single um, unit without a lot of casualties okay so so now I'm gonna take that guy and I'm gonna move him up there and the reason you do this is so that is so that you have to make an initial breakthrough okay and this is what where you want to use your tanks is in the initial breakthrough all right and then once you once you have broken through then you take everybody else and you push them through there and get to the point okay where you can um, uh, encircle this group now if I look up here okay see he can get over there but he can't get there okay but this guy he can't do it either all right so you have to look you have to look at your guys to make sure they can do what you want them to do this i this so this what, what this tells me is that third panzer can only get to this point so i'm going to if i want to encircle these guys it's going to have to be second panzer that's going to do it and put that put a put a tank there so let's let's um let's see here we've got uh, three guys here okay you know to be quite honest with you um <clears throat> use your tanks to achieve breakthroughs do not use your tanks for normal fighting okay um, let's take a look at this unit okay so it's got it's got all these tanks in this case you know you know Panzer threes uh, Panzer fours Panzer twos it's got over a hundred tanks <clears throat> But those tanks don't get replaced very quickly. They just don't get replaced. So you got to be very cautious about putting your tanks into battle. Do not fight battles with tanks. Use your tanks to break through, okay? And then fight your battles, um, if necessary, with your motorized troops, but preferably with your... Um, um, infantry. Now, if you take a look at this motorized group, notice he's got trucks, okay, and trucks will get uh, replaced. Heavy infantry will get replaced. So, if you're going to use your fast units for combat, then use your motorized troops. Now, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, but we're going to try it. Okay, so now let's see here. I just put all and so you see I've got two motorized and two tanks okay and it's 238 to 16 well I certainly so see here so now I'm not going to use these tanks why should I don't why should I waste tanks on this infantry where I could lose some tanks okay and we're gonna attack them 
and you see he's broken. Oh, I didn't I didn't put the um, the combat results, but what? But since the tanks didn't um, didn't participate in the combat, you will have lost no tanks. Okay. Now in this case, you also need because your infantry is so far behind, you also need to know how far can they come up so they can come up here to close that gap. So that means that means all of my tanks I've got to make a line starting from here because my infantry let's go ahead and do that see he can cover that position there and close the gap okay so now I'm going to take this back tank here here and I'm going to come up here and look at that Minsk Minsk is actually um, undefended so I'm going to take him and put him in there Okay, and now I'm going to start backfilling. And normally, normally what I do is in the in the in the first part, <coughs> you know, you can break it up into the first part of the game in which you are doing a blitz. You can then you get into a second part where you're doing a lot of attrition, and third part you should be um, moving towards your objectives. In the first part, um, two units it, it is enough to stop anything that the Russians have, and especially at this point when they're so disorganized, okay? Um, at this point, I moved a tank there by accident, okay. At this point, if you notice down here, he's, he's um, in bl blitzkrieg posture, but he's not being supported by air, and you have these cards here for the Luftwaffe um, where they give tax support, okay? Um, there is a there is a decision you have to make concerning the Luftwaffe and whether or not you want them what how much time do you want to leave them attacking headquarters whether it's a week two weeks three weeks or for a month just let them do it for a month because as long as they're attacking the headquarters these guys these guys are just um just not going to be able to um, counter your offensive, okay? And then once that month is over, then then if you have given you know when you can, you have the uh, political points. Go ahead and assign um, your Luftwaffe to your to your army group, okay? So um, just to finish this off here. So I'm trying to, trying to show you. So he's going to come up here, okay, and he's going to come up here, and he's going to come here, and I'm going to put him there. Oops, probably shouldn't shouldn't have made a mistake there. Usually, like to keep um, keep them in pairs. He's all by himself. And then, see, this is kind of a, this is, I think I did this in the next move, not this move, because first I wanted to destroy these guys, but I'm, I, I don't, I'm not sure I did that or not. I, I may well have attacked at this point. So here we go. We take the farthest one away. Take a look at our Panzer uh, Commander first. And notice our Panzer Commander, okay, he's, and notice also here, oh, this is, okay, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, second panzer, notice you see I, I've got Plint, he's in it, in the supply range, so everything's cool there. Okay, I have to bring up these guys, keep them, but that's that's the next, next phase. So third panzer here, he's got guys back here. I've got one, two, three, I can move him at least three. He's not going to be able to make it over there, so I'm going to... He's on a road. Okay. This is our main trunk going up, okay, for Army Group North. So I'm going to take him. I, he's going to need at least two, I think, so I'm going to move him two. Okay, and now you can see he's covering out to here, all right? So, 
Go back. Again, let's take a look and see where all my guys are. These are guys are all infantry. More infantry. So there's a tank sitting there. I've got four. Uh, let's see. One there. One there. And two there. All right. So we take the one who's furthest behind. Okay. And can I... Uh, should I put him there? Should I put him there? <coughs> if I... Let's put him there, okay? You can see he's he's covered in supply. And then I take this guy here. I bring him here. See, he's got two tanks there, you know? I mean, he's not going to be a problem at this phase, okay? But you really should be trying. I put him there. And I got another one here. So first, though, let's see how far I can get my infantry up. My infantry comes up there. So my infantry coming up here. But what if? But what will happen? Let me see here. So let's come up here like this. And this guy is about to die, so we just kill him. Always try to attack from more than one direction. And he's broken. Okay. So. And the more terrain you take, it actually opens up and gives you. Um, um, uh, more room to man uh, maneuver. Okay. So I'll move him up. All right. So. We're going to take this guy. Put him there. Now I have two tanks here, so I'm going to put this guy here. Okay, because it's a road, and it's a lot easier for them to move. And now I can see what what's in here. And what we see, if you look down here, okay, you not only see that he's very low strength, he's very few action points. Six, that's not enough to attack. He's at 21, he can attack. And the infantry, oh, they're at two. So... What you see there is even if they wanted to attack, they just, the best they're going to do is an infantry attack. So we're cool. We're cool here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to move him over there. Okay. And now, now, let me see here. These two guys, I'm not sure if I'm willing to attack them, though, because only one. Okay, and, and, now I'm just moving my guys up, backfilling as quickly as possible. Get them up there. Fourth Panzer. Uh, you, you have to have a strategy for how you're going to be using your your armies and where they're going. Okay, so Ninth Army is going to be going to the north. Fourth Army is going to be going to the south. And Second um, and Third Panzer are going to be operating in the central region here. And at Minsk, I'm going to be getting 2nd Army, and they will be um, going down this road, okay? So now it's time to be backfilling, moving your guys up, sealing them off. There's 9th Army, move him up. Okay, you see what, I, you see what I'm saying, okay? All right, now, so you might not be able to attack these guys, but you've, you've blocked them off. They're, they're not going to escape, and we've got 4 there, 3 there. Seven, eight, nine, ten. There's eleven doomed Soviets. Now, another thing about um, combat is that um, um, all of these guys, of course, have an AP uh, value. You know, action points. Okay, and your infantry under um, Blitzkrieg uh, posture will start with a hundred. Okay. And as they as they are involved in battles, that that um, those uh, uh, action points will diminish. Okay, the more fights they're in, the less action points you will get. Okay, so that and that represents wear and tear and fatigue. All right, so I'm going to attack this guy here to start to try to close this gap. And what I really want to do in this move is I want these guys to go away. 
okay? And the reason I want those guys to go away is because, you see, he is, see, see this here? This is the most important because it's a rail line, but this is also a, a, a line here too, and this one too. So if they're if the if the the Soviets will try to defend these li these lines here, okay, and you mu and you must clear them from that, okay, so that you can move your Panzers, okay. I need to I I, I have Pan uh, Fourth Panzer here, and he's and he's on this small road, which is cool, okay. But I I really want to end up with him on this main trunk, you know, in some form or fashion, so. But just to get back, here's another tip, okay, if you're, you're going to attack. Now notice that this unit here, okay, he is on the other side of a river. And many times you'll make attacks on people who are on the other side of the river. And um, 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 you'll find that in and of themselves, the unit, although it can attack, has a difficulty getting across that that river because they don't have enough action points. This is further into the war where your guys are now down to 60, 70, 50 and they, and they can't get across. If you if you enter in a, into a combat with a unit across a river, then what will happen is you will be able to move into that that um, that that hex because you just kicked him out of it. Uh, you just attacked him. You attacked over the river, so then you get, you get you can cross that river. Doesn't sound like it's real important, okay? But it is, okay. So, oops, I pushed all. Okay, so. Um, do I need that much power? Two eighty-five versus. Uh, you see, I got a tank in there. I don't want I don't want to be attacking with tanks. Okay. Two eleven. Okay, so that's good. And he's broken. Okay, and so what we see is and then fifth panzer, fifth fifth infantry, not only crosses that river, but he can come up over here. And what we really want to do is we want we want these um units from uh third panzer group to be coming into places like over here, okay, to secure this this road up here, okay, in this direction, this railroad, all right. But you will find there are times when you have battles, and if you and if you do it correctly, if you do it right, um, you can take advantage of winning that battle and get that unit across that river, okay. You see it more. Um, um, things down here like in the swamps later down here in these rivers here over here in this river area here this area is very important to to take okay I got rivers over here so that's just um, that's just uh, a, a minor tip thrown in there but the impo important thing is to make sure Okay, you know, you know um, that your your movement by your um, Panzers are going to be in supply when you're finished, and you have you need to have this range out there to show you that. Okay, keep him on roads, keep the Panzer guys on the roads. It will keep the the loss of um, trucks down and therefore the need for asking for trucks and stuff like that from um, your decisions um, keep them down to a minimum okay so trucks is you know is a it's a lot to to do you know if you don't understand that okay then you're not going to be able to play this game at all okay all right the other thing, of course, we need to remember is that that um, these Panzer groups, ten trucks. Once they get to ten, okay, then you're stretching your supply system, and you may lose trucks. Okay, at this point here, okay, I have Third Panzer up here. 
I have second Panzer down here, and you can see all these trucks coming up. One to supply second Panzer, one to supply third Panzer. I'm going to be losing trucks because of it, but it's going to pay off because I'm going to take um, uh, uh, Minsk, and as soon as I've wiped all these guys out, it will give me the um, um, option to move my my forward supply base there, and that's what I will do. So my first goal there is to get there and get the the forward supply base there. Okay, down here in the south, where you see I'm I'm making a um, pocket here. It's um, your first stop is um, Luvov. So you want to clear them out as fast as possible. Notice here that um, here's first Panzer. You know, my first games, I had I had this guy up here and I was just losing trucks like crazy. So if I want to, you know, I need to clean this out. So he's got, you know, extra room here. Um, and if I want, and if I decide I want to move them out of there, you know, I can always just move him, you know, one more up. Okay, but why? Because, 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 why? It, there's no reason to do that. Keep them as far back as possible so that they're in supply. But use them as a planning tool when you're going to attack. Okay? As far back as possible so that they use as few trucks as possible and therefore conserve your trucks. Okay. Now, another thing is these um, Sixth Army is going to get re um, reinforcements. All, almost all the armies are going to get reinforcements. Um, the thing to re remember is that the probability of getting there's there's a probability associated with getting reinforcements, and um, that probability is based on one: is it in a city? Okay, if it's in a city, it gives it a higher probability. Is it on a uh, main line? Is it on a communication line? That gives it a higher probability. Is it in open? Is it um, then? Is it in trees? Um, there's a probability that it will happen, but if you, but if this, but if your army guy is in a a marsh, you will not get reinforcements. So do not put your army guy into the um, marshes. Okay. You have a lot of you have a lot of space here, and but you need to control those army commanders okay and put them in places think about what you're going to be doing before you actually do it and base it on this guy your 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 army commander where to place him to do whatever you need to do okay all right so that is some that is really some basic stuff that you just have to understand about um, playing this game. Okay? It's just the way it works. Okay? Stay within command radius. Um, my, my view is only use tanks to break through positions. Okay? Only use the the um, the um, the Panzer units, 18th Panzer Division, to break through to help to create a pocket. Do not use them in cleaning up. Okay, if you have to, and and the best if you can is to use the motorized guys to do the breakthrough for you, and then push your tanks through there to conserve your tanks as much as possible. Tanks do not get replaced easily. It's a long campaign. Okay, Don't waste them by doing silly attacks when you don't have to. Let your infantry catch up, destroy the guys inside, and then start looking, um, you know, start looking for where am I going to go next with my tanks. Okay. Now you can see now, as the combat unfolds, as you're fighting this battle, okay, uh, these battles, okay, it's pretty much at the beginning of the war, so beginning of the, yeah of the uh, campaign, and the infantry 
on uh, Blitzkrieg, notice he's at 100 APs. All right. So this is the start of the move. This guy is at the full AP amount that he can get. Now, if we look at this guy here, he's got 100 APs. And then we look at this guy here, and he's at 80 AP, uh, APs. Okay, he's at 80 APs. Okay, and the guy next to him, with him, has got 100. But this is worth noting. Okay, as, the, as your troops go through combat, they're going to lose um, soldiers. Um, they're going to get fatigued. And this number is going to start to drop. Okay, and when this number gets down into the um, low 60s um, and 50s, then you will probably find that they're heavily fatigued and you're going to need to do something about it. Once they get down to the 40s, they're useless. Okay, so just by looking at this, just by looking at these numbers, I have a good idea of what the fatigue is. But if you, if, you want, if you really want to know what the fatigue situation is, you just click on him and hit the R button here, okay, and it tells you. In this case, okay, what it's telling me here is that there's penalties for, um, for partisans going on. None of these guys has got to the point of um, where they've um, incurred um, fatigue penalties. But as the, as the battles go go on, um, they will start getting more and more fatigued. You also will have reinforcements. You, you'll see um, reinforcement stages in which these guys will actually get more men. Um, they'll get, they might bump up a, a bit, but you're going to be in some big battles. You've got a lot of terrain to cover, and uh, these guys are going to eventually um, have a lot of fatigue. All right, so having talked about that, that's, that's your, your um, that is your uh, a combat um, and supply um, uh, part of um, what I wanted to talk about. Remember, like I say, it, it, you, you should really be using this 10-truck rule to to make FSBs, as soon as you know when I take when I take Louvre off, then I you know my my Panzer commander, okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten, he can come to here, and we can still do some operations. But if we want to push any further, we're going to probably it's probably a good idea to create a um, forward operation uh, supply base at Louvre. Okay. The infantry doesn't matter. Use your infantry to clean up. Use your panzers to make breakthroughs. That's kind of pretty obvious. But be careful what you're doing with your with your commanders, especially your panzer commanders, so that they're not losing trucks. Okay. So I'm going to, okay, so uh, now let's talk just a little bit about relations. All right, so here, here we are. It's the very beginning of this game. Okay, so one of the things, um, I'm going to go to the score here. One of the things is at the very beginning, you get a, you get a chance to determine what um, kind of um, way you want to manage the war. And I go with military independence. In other words, I don't, I'm not going to snivel to Adolf Hitler, okay? Do not snivel to the Nazis, okay? Do not snivel to the Nazis, all right? None of these guys like it, all right? Although it doesn't affect your, your trains and truck guys, it, uh, it will affect your army group commanders and especially will affect OKW. So do not snivel to Adolf Hitler, all right? Just because he wants something doesn't mean you have to do it. Okay, so for example, here is a program film, propaganda film, okay? 
and Goebbels is saying, hey, you know, this would be a really good idea. Okay. You know, sorry, I don't have time for you. Okay. You're too busy. I don't have time for you. And that's going to... Okay, Goebbels is upset. Goebbels, well, my relationship is poor. I don't care. Keitel, who is in the um, high command there, okay, he doesn't like that either. Okay, and my public relations score has dropped. Okay, so what? Public relations, public relations. I'm fighting a war, okay? I don't care about public relations. I want to win a war. So I'm not interested in all this stuff with the Nazis, okay? I'm not interested in that, okay? And that's the attitude you have to take. You're the commander. You're operating the army, okay? Screw the, screw the Nazis, the high command. You're the one who's responsible for the operation, okay? Do not snivel to them, all right? And the things will start to fall in place once you start seeing something like that, once you start having that attitude in the um, decisions that you have to make and so forth. Um, it will really make a, a big difference. Okay, so then you get stuff like this, extra artillery for um, RB Group Center. Okay, well, you know, read, you know, after you've played the game as much as I have, I mean, I don't need to read it anymore, but basically Garrick is saying that he's recommending not to increase the volume of artillery shells because he's barely coping. Okay, so if you just increase it by a small amount, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to, to make um, uh, Wagner's relationship go worse. And you really need these two guys. You need to concentrate in the early war in getting these two guys' reputation up high. Okay? The reputations make differences because, <clears throat> see, he's at superb. And what you notice there is it says positive at start of turn may have, may have changed. Decisions, options, cost adjustment, minus 4 PP. So the more they like you, the less these decisions that you see up here will cost. There's that, there'll actually be a cost adjustment <clears throat> made based because it's his his this is his thing if you're if you're making something a uh, decision uh, concerning trains <coughs> you will get a minus 4 pp on what the actual cost of that decision would actually be and that's that's why in the end you want all of these guys to be up really liking you except for hitler who you could care less about okay at the very beginning Okay, you're going to find it very hard to keep these to get these guys um, uh, to like you, and you shouldn't worry about getting these guys to like you. You just don't want them to dislike you. You don't want them to be poor. Neutral is cool. Okay, what you want to do is you want to get these two guys up as fast as possible, and you want to make sure that OKW, who's your boss, is the one who's also happy with you, okay? Notice his cur current relationship is plus 19, okay? And he's important because, okay, he gives two possible um, decisions. One is have a word, and have a word is an option that you play on one of your um, um, army group commanders to bring up, bring up their... Um, um, relationship with you. In other words, if the guy <coughs> goes to poor, he doesn't like you. Okay, so what you do is you're going, having a word means you pull him aside and you say, hey, hey, I'm the commander. You're the subordinate. You do what I tell you. And boom, up goes his, um, up goes his uh, 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 respect for you, if you will. It's respect. So that's really important. Okay, that decision and also it gives you the chance of a smooth the way decision. And smooth the way is another very good um, um, uh, uh, um, decision to get because smooth the way gives one of your theater commanders 
extra AP. Okay, if everybody in that um, in that um, theater will get extra AP. Okay, so for example, if you've got too many guys falling behind or what have you, and you get and you get that order, that may be the time when it's it's a good time to use those tanks to rush forward, and your infantry will move faster than normal to catch up. Okay, so that's really an important an important um, decision if it appears and you need to take it pretty much every time you get it okay don't worry about Gore, uh, him either so again first work on these guys and then once you start as they start going up like this guy's superb okay you're going to find there's, there's going to be times when <coughs> some one, def one des a, a decision will affect one guy badly and one guy favorably. Okay, so now that I've got him at superb, if I run into a decision which is going to affect one of these, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it affects this guy who's at superb badly. Okay, his relationship is plus 52, so it will drop. Okay, but this guy's reputation will go up. Okay, so you want to you want to play these two off on each other, okay? Get one up, okay? And then slowly also you'll you'll you can get both of them up, okay? Once you got them up high, then you can make decisions that they may not like, but which your um army group uh guys will like. Notice also when you talk about postures um in the cards you will see that you have a command here, okay? And that's a focus. And focus, focus staff and command resources onto an army or panzer group. Okay, this is very important. It, um, you can, you get um, additional um, um, perks, if you will, for your panzer group. But your panzer group, okay, the panzer groups, can lose that focus if your if your um, group commander um, <clears throat> all of a sudden decides that he doesn't like you, okay, and he he will take the focus away. So don't waste the points on per putting a focus on a Panzer group if your if your um, group commanders are 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 don't have. Um, strong, strong uh, 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 relations with you, with you. So this is something you need to wait. You need to have patience for. Okay, it's a long campaign. First, build up these guys, keep OKW happy, and then slowly you'll move these guys up. And and then once you have solid relationships with them, then give the focus to your Panzer groups. So I'm going to um, I'm going to go to um, a little bit further in the war, so that um, we can talk about some other stuff here, mostly postures. Okay, so I I um, I loaded up my um, my four October move from my last game, so that we can talk about postures. All right, and the question is. When do you switch from a blitzkrieg posture to a sustained posture? Notice this guy here, okay? He has that, um, that focus, and you can see the focus is here that I've, I've taken. It's called envelopment, okay? So it allows your guys more flexibility to envelop. Okay, but we're talking about postures right now. Okay, so 16th Army is over here. And let's take a look at 16th Army. Okay. And as I was talking about, pay attention to these numbers here. So this guy's at 42. Okay, and I'm just going through my army. 42, 62. He probably was a reinforcement. 42, he's at 100. He was a reinforcement. 42, 42, 42, 42. 77, 42. All right, you know, 
he's not doing so great. So let's look, take a look at him here. And there we go. We see the, the F, which is for um, um, fatigue. And the fatigue has either one or two exclamation points. points. Two excla uh, ex exclamation points mean that unit is heavily fatigued. And um, it's almost worthless. Okay, as I say, you can tell it. You can tell by just looking at how many how many AP points the guy has. I mean, he's at 42, so he's not going to be able to do almost nothing. He's lucky if he can move one 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 hex. Okay, let alone get involved in combat. So this guy, it's time. Okay, it's time to rest him. Okay, it's understanding so that. Understand, understand that as you start, everybody's in blitzkrieg mode, right? So you're all pushing really hard, really hard. You're using the, those extra modifiers to win battles. You're pushing the Russians back. But there's going to come a point there where your guys are just going to wear out. Okay, And hopefully what you do is you're in a position where you can then go ahead and rest that unit. But it's not good enough, I don't think, to rest that unit. If you decide that it's time to rest a unit, then if you can, okay, you also need to change their posture. Now, rest, if you rest a unit, it's going to take two moves, two turns, before they come out of the rest. So it's going to take two, two turns, and these guys are, are not, you're not going to be able to use them at, um, at all. Um, if I give this guy a rest order right now, um, they are vulnerable to attack on this move. But once they go into rest, the AI respects that for some reason, and they will not attack them. Okay, So they'll be left in peace. So you don't have to hide them somewhere. You can leave them on the front line. Um, give them the rest order, and then the next move, give them the sustained um, sustained posture. Okay, and we can see this, see the difference here. Okay, these, okay, sixth army and seventeenth army to get where they are right now um, have gone through a lot of combat, a lot of combat, and. All of them, both of them, have been rested and have been put on sustained ops. Okay, so press on here, you see he's got a blue blue um, uh, pointer now. He's on sustained offensive posture. Okay, now look at the difference here. I press on him. This is the beginning of the move. He's, he's got 105 AP. 105 AP, so there's a real good reason to switch these guys out of Blitzkrieg and into Sustained. All right, so and let's take a let's take a look at some of these other guys. Okay, so they're up in the hundreds. All right, that was 120, 120. This guy's at 79. Okay, this guy's at 78. A lot of a lot of fighting going on up there, but when they come out of Sustained Ops, okay. This guy's at 120. All right. Um, they're going to have a lot more APs. A lot more APs. So, okay. So, I'm a little bit late here. Um, possibly resting and um, putting this guy's into um, sustained ops. Maybe I'm a little bit too late. But he's going to get it now. Okay, this guy over here, for example. Okay, notice this icon here. Okay, this division is reorganizing, changing postures. I have rested Ninth Army because there's no longer real big threat to them, and and they're they are getting they are getting sustained ops. Okay. Um. That's your infantry. I never rested 
um, first Panzer. Okay. I don't. I didn't rest um, third Panzer. And they and and and. It's a possibility you'll need to do that because they've got infantry regiments and all that. Depends on how you use them. I don't rest fourth Panzer either, but I did, especially after, after um, this battle, that I initiated to take. Um, um, where is it here? Gomel. Okay, I ended up with a big battle here with Second Panzer, and and we wiped out almost all of these guys up here. Um, after that, I put Second Panzer. Uh, I gave them rest. Okay, but I did not put them on sustained ops. Okay, because there's still too many Russians. I still have too far to go. Um, but he has a lot of infantry. Mm -hmm. Order of Battle, OKW, AGC, Second Panzer, and you can see the state of them. Okay. One, two, three. So they have four infantry and a cavalry unit there. They've got a lot of infantry and cavalry. Third Panzer, they've got four infantry as well. But second Panzer is your real big guy. I noticed this guy here. Okay. Let's take a look at him. 25 tanks. Okay. He's got 25 tanks. So... When do you change posture? When your guys are no longer effective, okay? When your guys have got to the point where they can't, they can't move and they can't fight and they're losing battles. That's when, okay? And especially when, you, when you've gotten to a certain point, such as with 17th Army and 6th Army, where I got this situation here under control and, and um, my first panzer is moving over here. These guys are basically in a defensive position. Okay, great time to rest them and um, change their, their focus. Okay, real important. All right, now, another thing, another thing that, um, and, and let's take a look at relationships here. And you see here, you see that these guys are good, but look at this, these guys are superb, eh? Uh, and he's good, okay? So I've gotten him up to 61. And notice decision options cost adjustment minus four. So anything having to do with um, Army Group South on the decisions and your reports that you have to make every every uh, turn will be minus four for for that cost. So, you know... Division commendation. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Okay, so this is Army Group South. This is Runestead. And he's saying that this guy needs a commendation. Okay, and so I'm going to make the decision. And you see, because he's superb, okay, he's giving you um, four points of uh, PP just because he, he's superb with the relations. And, and you're your um, decision will cost you no PP, okay? Zero PP. So, of course, I'm going to do that. And that unit, that unit will now receive an extra boost in its, um, its um, fighting power because it's been uh, commanded. You'll also have times when you will have... Um, um, regiments or divisions where the commander has disgraced himself, um, you'll be asked to um, override your, your um, um, theater commander. If you do, it will be a, a hit to his, his um, reputation. He will think less of you, so just let him do it. And unfortunately, that regiment's going to have a... Um, uh, minus to its um, fighting strength but but he's just one in a big machine and uh, it's much more important 
that you get these guys up here so as a whole the theater groups guy the theaters are functioning well you're going to have sometimes where, where it hurts sometimes where it helps but you got to look at the big picture and the long term okay so remember you know you are fighting this war okay you have got to finish this war as early as possible okay you do not want to get into the winter you'll be making winter preparations and asking you know you uh, when i'm asked for you know there's a decision where you ask von block to endorse your winter proposals um and you will have um you'll have w one option is pretty high that he will help you and the other is ask for a favor so i normally ask for a favor it reduces his respect a little bit for you okay because you're asking him for a favor but you know you can make the winter options um and uh and still keep in there so so, so for example winter meeting okay and it says the Führer is all uptight about winter clothing and all that. And um, um, he considers such talk to be needlessly pessimistic. Okay. Well, I mean, I could go and I could talk to him, and it's a 90% chance that I'm going to get him to back me. Okay, but remember, his relationships are poor. He's a Nazi, okay? So I'm going to say, hey, man, I'm too busy. I'm fighting a war here. Too bad. Let's see what happens, okay? It's not an auspicious time to raise a matter. Okay, a later time we'll be fine. That's, that's from his uh, chief of staff, okay? So nothing really happened out of that, okay? We did nothing, nothing happened. There are, there are times when... Let me see, Fuhrer Conference. Okay, so here's one. Okay, he wants, Fuhrer, the Fuhrer wants to discuss what the hell's going on. Well, you don't want to send a telegram to the Fuhrer because, you know, there's going to be times when you're going to have things that are going to happen. And, um, for example, when the Nazis start killing civilians. Okay, you do not want to make things, you want to be you know, pissed off about that. But you can't make it a formal thing because if you make it a formal thing, in the end, your boss, OKW, he's going to suffer from that. And you don't want to do that. So you want to keep things as informal as possible. So in this case, you know, you can telegram the Fuhrer, 80% chance of a good act, uh, outcome. You can ignore the conference, okay, uh, uh, you know, I don't see any problem with that. Or you can you can send a, a junior staffer, okay, or reluctantly attend. I think I send a junior staffer. I'm going to send this young officer, and he's going to go talk to Hitler and my my for me, okay. Okay, so what is this? Okay, so the Fuhrer is unimpressed, and. Keitel is unimpressed, but I don't care, okay? I don't care, and it doesn't affect my guys, okay? I didn't go sniveling to Adolf Hitler, and if I do go sniveling to Adolf Hitler, it's going to knock him on the head, all right? This is a situation here. You've got these um, construction battalions, okay? And they've been working. They work basically in unsecure zones. And you, you, they will ask you whether you want to make, put them in, instigate a protective uh, doctrine. Okay. Now, the thing here is with these construction battalions, I mean, these are slave workers, slave, slave workers more or less. Okay, and Garrick, he's he's not liking like not liking it. This is unacceptable. Okay, now if you continue, you're going to hurt Garrick's reputation. If you instigate a, a protective doctrine, you're going to save his reputation, but somebody else is going to object to that, and especially very possibly 
um, your boss because he wants you to end this war quickly and he doesn't care what it, what it takes to do that. Okay? So I'm just going to say continue operating with uns let's see what happens when I do that. I see so 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 you see Garrick okay he's unimpressed and he loses only minus 1. So okay no big hit there. But what we see is is that my boss OKW he's pleased, okay? So once again it goes back to the mindset you have to be in you have to win this war quickly. Um, um, things that get in the way of winning the war quickly, you have to just push them aside and concentrate on fighting the war, leave all the propaganda, all this other kind of stuff out and, uh, uh, you know, too bad, okay? Concentrate on the war, win the war, okay? That's the whole, that's important. In this case, you see we have a truck refit here. Okay. And this is these things are almost always you need to do them. So you need to, as best you can, just refit. And you see Van Lieb is pleased. And this is how this is how um, you increase these guys' um, reputation, especially especially with truck refits and all that. Okay. There will be things like like that. And that's your opportunity to not only get more trucks, but to increase the um, your reputation with these guys, taking care of them, taking care of their subordinates, taking care of their decisions, and respecting their decisions. Okay. All right. So I think I'm pretty much plowed through all the stuff I wanted to talk about. Okay. All the really important stuff. Notice again, you know, third pans are all the way back here. You know, he's all the way back here using as few trucks as possible. Second pans are on that road using as few trucks as possible. You know, coming from Minsk up to here. There's n no reason for me to move this to Smolensk. Okay, waste. Um, although it will ask me to do that. You know? Okay, move it to Smolensk. I mean, and it doesn't matter really at this point in the war. Look how much look how much gas I've got. I got forty seven thousand in gas. Okay. So when when you move your um, forward supply base for two moves, um, fuel doesn't flow. And in this case, in this case it wouldn't matter if I if I moved my supply base to Smolensk. Okay, because I would still have plenty of gas to continue operations for the next two moves. Okay, I prefer to keep it back here because it's not using a lot of trucks and because it's not really close to the front line. Okay, if for some reason they were able to um, take over your FSB, that would cause a critical problem for your army. So we don't want to put it in a place where it's even close that they can get at it. Okay. Down here you see my FSB here. Aircraft. Remember, aircraft have to be within f um, 15 if you want them to supply um, um, fuel to your Panzers. They have to be within 15. And it depends on what kind of um, Operations that you've uh, that you've told uh, Goring to operate under, and I told Goring to doesn't matter what the conditions are. If I need him, he needs to respond. Okay, because it's not going to be a long war. We're not going to we're going to end this war. Okay, he doesn't like that, but I don't care. Okay. Okay, and uh, just looking over here, make sure I've got all my done all my stuff I want to talk. Oh, the other thing I want to talk to talk a little bit about, I think I've talked about it some, but um, that is um, when you have a group surrounded. Okay, before choosing 
who and what and and everything will attack it will you use for your attack always check how many APs they have this all this also matters a big deal when you're in a big city like Leningrad sometimes you might have to make a preemptive attack just a, just a, a first attack just to lower their um, their action points down to zero and once they're down down to zero then you'll be able to roll in on them so um, knowing what their action points are it not only tells you um, how well they can defend but whether they can try to break out or how much f but it also tells you how, how much force you need to um, to apply onto them okay so if I want to do I need my tank to attack these guys you know I got these two infantry guys here you know can I you know I'm not going to be able to I don't think I'm going to be able to take him without my tanks right so 96 versus 100 that nope I can't do that so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll attack over here he's not going to break through this panzer these panzers here okay so here's my here's my uh, uh, motorized uh, guys and they'll 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 just come in there and beat him up okay have some pincers there beat him up get my infantry around let my infantry beat him up lead my panzers out of the battle if at all possible there for breakthroughs not for fighting okay your 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 panzers and here I committed a mistake here because I didn't put this guy to priority. If you put him on priority, you get a guy who's got beat up really bad. They they made uh, a couple moves ago before. They made an attack on me, broke broke through my line. He was he was here all by himself, and he took a, a heavy beating. So I'm keeping him out of the battle now, uh, and um, in the next move or so, I'll put him on priority to get his uh, strength and everything up. Everything else, I mean, all of this other stuff, I mean, I just leave it, I just left, left it as it is. I don't touch it at all. Okay. Uh, remember also, you know, talking about the air bases, when you move your um, forward supply base, move your, move your air bases with it so that your air base is always, always within within 15 of your panzer group you know I mean, look at look at my panzer army guy he's way back here okay so i don't have to use a whole lot of trucks all right um some important things to be looking at all the time or as the game goes on i look at the log intel almost the entire game to see how many divisions the russians have this case we're looking at maybe 170 okay we've destroyed 334 I like to look at that once you get in the mid battle um, mid the mid mid part of uh, the game you should either be checking on your headquarters and hitting the R button or you can come to this here and get an overall um, assessment of your troops here is fatigue highest fatigue so you put put on that and you can see here 16th army is really fatigued uh, and then 4th army is really fatigued and then the next ones are third and fourth arm. Well, you know, the Romanians, you know, fourth Romanian need is pretty heavily fatigued. Third Romanian is getting there. These guys are at fatigue one. So sixth army, eleventh army, um, you know, we rested them. And uh, I believe I didn't Im immediately 
um, give them a change of um, of posture. But I I figured it out in the end, and you and go ahead and rest them, and then because it takes two moves, wait one move, and then and then change their posture, which takes one move, so that they come out of out of their rest with a change in posture. Sometimes you don't have the AP to you know to do that, the political points to do that, but that's kind of what you want to do. It's one follows the other, just like just like your your where your aircraft are stationed, it, you want it to follow where your FSB goes. Okay, and then over here, of course, in stats, this is seeing, you know, you want to see, this tells you the army sizes, your, your um, casualties, and, and these are always quite important. Fuel, you know, look, look at, Army Group Center's got fuel up the yin yang. Um, the push on Leningrad gets hurt by the lack of fuel. Okay, I can make that up by flying um, Luftwaffe missions to supply them with fuel, though. Trains. Okay, north and and south took a hit, but generally. Center's doing fine, truck columns, and there you see north and south are taking hits in um, their truck columns. And when we look at partisans, we can see that south, the um, partisans are just going out of control. These guys are coming up, but they're starting to um, fall off. Okay, that affects your... Um, your trains an awful lot. Okay. Part of just part of um, the long-term campaign, you're going to eat up territory. You're going to cause more partisans, and um, it's going to cause uh, truck losses. Um, I mean, train losses. You're also going to, you know, you're going to uh, get truck losses. But you can keep that to the minimum by keeping these guys on these roads, okay? Also, uh, also there's another decision in which you, you know, although it doesn't say it, okay, there's nowhere I can identify it. Um, all these armies are being supplied, okay? In the rules, basically, it says just as, you know, as long as they're within your troops are within this guy, then everybody's being supplied, okay? It's automatic for the slow movers, for the infantry armies, okay? But I I do feel that there is some sort of um, mechanic in there in which trucks are playing a role because there is a decision. If you're really having a hard time and you're, you're chewing up um, trucks like crazy, you'll get a... Um, You'll get a um, decision in which you can, um, it's called a uh, truck escondment, okay? You'll get a, you'll get a, and that, that decision will say, um, you can take trucks from the um, slow-moving uh, armies to give to your panzers, and, and it usually says how many trucks it wants, you want to give to them, you know, 40 trucks, 30 trucks, 20 trucks, 10 trucks. Well, so... Um, I haven't tested it out, but I'm pretty sure that if you take trucks from your infantry armies, that that will affect that will affect their action points. Their action points will go down. I, I, I haven't checked that out to me for sure. So that is a last resort to take to take trucks from your infantry. Try not to do that. Stay on those roads. I think I had one time when it asked me to do that and I took like 10 trucks. I took the minimum because I was having a problem with trucks. And there you go. Uh, I've been just blathering on and on. Um, but I, you know, I it's just I just wanted to do this, to do this, um, b 
big data data dump of all these things that I have learned, uh, which is running in the background under the hood in this um, in this game. The philosophy you have to take, how you fight your battles, how you how you manage your troops and so forth, um, with the postures and this and that, because because it is a complicated game, and just and in the beginning when you start to play it you don't understand these things then it becomes so frustrating that you just want to drop it and um, I'm here to say now I'm I'm at the review portion of this game okay I encountered um, what I consider to be no bugs in the game the game plays very well um, I uh, the the um, uh, UI is a little clunky in that you know you have to you know you have to click on that and then click on that and then click on you know click on that to attack there's also hotkeys and then and then you know you can you can list your guys like that you know but the way the way I prefer to do it especially if there's many many guys attacking is that okay here's the beginning Okay, so I, I click on this guy. Okay, and if I put a list, all it's going to do, I'm going to see who's available to attack, okay? But if I actually go through them, okay, I can see he's 53, he's 44, he's 24, he can't even attack. These guys are reforming. He's at 80, okay? So when you're attacking, when you're attacking, um, right fresh move, okay, and I'm going to attack. Okay, when I look at these numbers, he's at 110, he's at 140. When you look at these numbers, okay, it's telling you the fatigue level that they're at. Okay, so if you have, so if I, if I can attack this guy with less than all of this stuff that I need, let's say it's, it's four infantry units against one guy let's let's kind of come down here okay okay what I'd like to do is I like to okay I'll put all okay so all can't all, all doesn't work mm. give me a situation I can use here but this isn't gonna work so well either um, maybe this one let's see okay so then what I'll do is I'll click on the units and look at their APs okay and I see that you see this guy has got 80 APs so if I put him into another battle it's just gonna fatigue him even more so why do that yeah I'm gonna probably suffer less ca less casualty and all that but there's times when there's bigger battles okay and you've got maybe four or five units in there and you don't need the four or five units so the way to say I don't want you is by looking at at their fatigue level, at their level of you know their APs. If they have lower APs, exclude them from the battle. Use the guys with the higher a APs to fight the battle. Okay. In this case, I don't need him. Okay. And I probably don't even need the second guy. No casualties there. Um, the difference is, is that, and of course, as you're getting into the end game and, and all this here, is that the more you attack them with, um, the less, the and the, and the less you're concerned about with fatigue, especially if if the um, guys aren't, aren't sustained, is that the more guys plunge in there, the more likely you are to wipe them out, okay, or cause, uh, inflict heavy casualties on them, okay. Do I need this many guys? 500? Well, you know, 500 is the maximum. I've got 150% 150 uh, concentric attack because I'm attacking him from just about every, one, every corner except for here. This guy doesn't have enough. So I look through, just look through these guys. 102. 
You know, if I if I take him away, I'll lose some concentric attack. So I won't use him. I won't use him. 380, I'll use him. So I had a phone call there, and I, I, uh, you could hear it ringing in. Sorry about that. So let's take a look at the casualties here. So we lose four, 400, and they lose, oh, 7,000 there, 23, 24,000. OK. Th at this time, it's not important, OK, because I've been changing postures. But it is a, but by, by when, when you do have the option to, to choose which units you want to fight, okay? Try to try to use the one whose initial whose initial um, um, uh, action points are the lowest. That extends the life of your armies before you have to rest them and change postures. Okay, that's another little trick there. And when it comes to the last thing, I guess, is when it comes to whether you leave people, uh, the Soviet guys behind, you'll have a chance to um, attack them, maybe just with one guy, and just attack him. And then you'll get to see what his um, action points are. And if he's at zero, then you can just leave him. Okay, and just leave him. Don't worry about trying to destroy him. Just leave him. And so, um, I get to my final review now I, um, of the game, and I think it is a really fun game. But you've got to know how it works. You've got to know, you know, and I guess what the developer was hoping was that the people would be willing to put in the time to learn how all of this stuff works um, underneath the hood. But... Um, um, it takes a lot of time, okay? I had nobody that I could really um, look at other people's videos or, or even after action reports um, that, would, that really explained how all this stuff works. And if you go to the um, 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 If you go to the Steam page in the discussions, you'll still see that there were a, there's a lot of discussion there about supply and how all this stuff works. And it's obvious that um, the game was just a little bit too difficult for most people, um, and that's why that's why I've I, I've that's why I put the effort into this because I felt that there was a really good game here, and um, like I say, if you haven't played it, it's worth it, okay? you got to have some patience, learn the mechanics. If you have played it, try it again. Um, hopefully with my tips and explanations of how things work and the philosophy you need to take, that you'll be able to um, have a much more uh, enjoyable experience it's a, it's it's definitely worth it. The AI is really good. I played a couple times Soviets for a, a little bit just to see how what are the mechanics going on with the Soviets, and um, I think that 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 um, it's also um, going to be tough playing as the Soviets in this. So the AI is good for both. A, um, um, fighting as the Axis or fighting as Soviets. It, it, the, it, and that makes this game um, high re uh, replayability. So I really recommend the game. And um, if, like I say, if you haven't tried it, try it. If you found it too confusing, hopefully I've given you enough information that you will now understand how all these mechanics work and you'll be able to have um, an enjoyable experience. This has been a long video, I know. 
I, th I, I hope it's worth it if it helps anybody to um, get back into a game or to buy a game and have fun with it because this is what gaming is all about then I've done my job and uh, that's the whole point of, uh, of this video so thanks very much for watching I know I don't have a, um, a big um, big viewership like I say there's there's the history guy out there he he has a big has a big uh, big uh, subscriber uh, group of su subscribers he hasn't uh, touched this game I think he's missing out he should try it this is to you history guy try the game mate it's fun all right so once again thanks everybody for watching and um, this will definitely wrap up my videos on uh, decisive campaigns Barbosa it's been a great fun frustrating sometimes very frustrating but I've really enjoyed it hopefully you enjoyed my videos uh, like I say I am I'm just an old guy who just enjoys making videos and um, if you in, if you like them or if you watch them that's good enough for me when I see somebody like a video you know I can't tell you how happy I am but uh, it's uh, it's not important I'm not gonna I'm not here to you know to be a professional I'm just having fun take care everybody until next time we'll see you later <laughs>